Hola, hi, this is Al, your statistics instructor. Let's get to work. In this video, we will redo an example we have already worked on. Okay, but this time we are going to be uh, solving this problem using an R package. Okay, let's begin. So, as advertised, uh, this is an old problem, an old example, right? But uh, when we did this, uh, we uh, analyzed the data set coming from this experiment sequentially, right? Uh, one observation at a time, right? And uh, by hand, using a uh, using a series of uh, tables, remember? So let me remind you what this uh, experiment and what this data set was about, right? So we had this researcher who was interested in the uh, effect of uh, honey on hemoglobin, right? So he had four pairs of twins, right? One of the twins of each pair was assigned to uh, the treatment group, meaning diet included honey, and the other uh, twin uh, remaining from each pair was assigned to a control group, no honey. Okay? So, uh, this is a graphical representation of the experiment, remember? Okay? So, at the end of the experiment, the uh, increase in hemoglobin uh, was compared and uh, these are the four scenarios that we were considering B0 was 0% 0 of the honey twins have a greater hemoglobin increase B1 25% of honey twins have a greater hemoglobin increase and so on 50% 75% all of them okay and the researcher was particularly interested in the posterior probability of scenario B2. 50% of honey twins have a greater hemoglobin increase. Okay? Okay. So, uh, this was our data set. So, as you can see, the four honey twins uh, experienced a greater hemoglobin increase. Uh, they showed a greater hemoglobin increase so um, and this was the way that we uh, computed the posterior uh, distribution for B0, B1, B2, B3 and B4 right? so after the first uh, observation we could rule out scenario B0 then we did that for the second, third and fourth. Right? Remember now? Okay. So, now let's do this using an R package. Okay? So the authors uh, of our textbook, right, they created uh, an R package. Okay? So let's launch R. So something that you would need to do is first you need to install the package, okay? So step one, install package. And remember that, that when I do this, right, when I have a hashtag before uh, something that I type on the R console, R will uh, ignore it, right? It's just a comment. So this is what you would need to do. Just type install packages and the name of the package is Bolstat, right? The first name of the first of the authors of our textbook, okay? So once you type that, just press enter and you'll see something like this. Then you have to choose uh, a CRAN mirror, right? So it could be this one, then you double click here on OK and just follow the instructions. 
and wait for a few minutes and that's it okay okay so I already did that okay now the thing is uh, you have to install that package only once but every time that you are going to use it you have to load the library right so step two load library or package right so to load the uh, library the R package would be in this case since we want to use Ballstat it would be just type library the name of your package in this case Ballstat there we are now we get to use the uh, functions included in that in that inside that R package okay okay now the uh, function that I want to use here with you it's called binomdp as in binomial with discrete prior okay so see binomial with discrete prior and the arguments the, the uh, inputs that we're going to need are x where x represents the number of observed successes in our experiment n number of trials in that binomial experiment pi is the uh, possibilities that uh, we have for that uh, parameter for the parameter proportion right so in this case uh, pi would be 0, 25 percent, 50 percent, 75 percent and 100 percent right and then pi prior as the name suggests would be the prior probability for each of these values of pi that we are considering make sense okay now let's create that object pi right the uh, list of uh, possible values for that proportion as we said right uh, if we go back to what we had here b0 if we index uh, these scenarios by the proportion of honey twins who have a greater hemoglobin increase right it's B0 is 0 percent B1 one quarter or 25 percent two quarters three quarters four quarters okay so here we go uh, zero uh, one quarter two quarters three quarters and four quarters okay there we are now let's talk about the prior uh, we right are assuming that each of these are equally likely right when we start we just uh, that's the uh, prior that we considered so it would be 1 over 5 one way of doing this would be yeah uh, we could repeat the value 1 fifth how many times 1 2 3 4 5 times right okay so now if everything goes well right let me just uh, do this uh, results will be assigned we'll get uh, the output from the function binomial with discrete prior X again remember the number of successes that we observed four right four successes four of the honey twins experienced or uh, yeah or uh, show a greater hemoglobin increase right out of four trials that would be the n pi is this guy so it would be pi is equal to pi right and then pi prior well, it's equal to this guy okay so 
So by default, we get a graph, a graphical representation of our prior and our posterior, right? So one fifth for each of those possible values that we considered, and the blue dots, uh, you know, represent our posterior probabilities. Make sense? Okay. Finally, note that we get uh, some sort of a table here. So, uh, for the first uh, possible value for B0, right, we have 0, which makes sense. Remember that after the uh, first, after we consider the first uh, observation here in this uh, sequential approach that we did before, we ruled out that scenario, right? But now, let's go and see what's the final posterior after you have considered all four observations, right? So for B1 we have 1 over 354. So 1 over 354 is roughly 0 0.0028. This guy here, that's for 25%, right? Next one, for B2 16 over 354 16 over 354 right so B2 is 50% right so what you have is this right and you can do the same for the rest for instance for B4 right that's uh, uh, for that scenario that's uh, all of the honing twins uh, experience a higher hemoglobin uh, increase right so 256 over 354 that would be the uh, posterior this guy right so let's summarize if you want to analyze right uh, data from uh, well well uh, data uh, with a binomial likelihood and you are considering a discrete prior you could use uh, the uh, library the R package Ballstat right what you have to do is first install that package that you will have to do only once but this you will have to load that library every time you want to use it because it is not part of the uh, base R so if uh, in a particular session you want to use uh, this uh, R package you have to load it using this command library ballstat and then uh, the uh, important function here to analyze uh, data with a binomial likelihood and with a discrete uh, prior is binodp binomial with discrete prior right and the uh, arguments the main arguments are first number of successes in your sample your sample size pi that contains the values for that proportion for the probability of success right and pi prior which contains the prior uh, probabilities for each of those values that you're considering for the probability of success okay and that's it that is going to help you find very quickly your posterior distribution okay well that's it thank you so much for watching please take care and keep working hard see you next time bye